Hey, good morning, everybody. Welcome to the Daily Link. We take a break from our day to make sure that we do not take a break from our faith. I am both very excited and a little bit frustrated today with uh, the message that we'll be sharing together because one of the, um, shall I say, side effects of the lockdown is, uh, of course, watching movies, right? And so, like, the last few days, my kids have been, they wanted we watched we showed them like the original beauty and the beast and then they wanted to watch like the new version of beauty and the beast and i'm one of those people that gets earworms it's like when a song gets stuck in your head and this whole morning i've been trying to focus with beauty and the beast music just blaring in my head and so i don't know if you ever have those problems but it gets to be really severe for for me and um and so like, we're gonna have probably the deepest conversation that we've had yet today. And this is the most unprepared I've been just because my brain is totally scrambled and a big soupy mess. So pray for grace for me, pray for grace for you, but it should be a fun conversation today. And uh, I'm, I'm really looking forward to it. So hopefully we can capture of it and hopefully I don't blab too long as I've already been doing and go past our, uh, our 15 minute mark. Hopefully we can keep it somewhat contained here, but. I want to welcome you to our core, and this is our part nine of our of our series here for core. And uh, we've been talking about some of the parallels between the prodigal son and and the creation account in, in Genesis, right? And so, you know, the prodigal came to a place in which he quote came to his senses, and he really what he did is he witnessed that there's just a tremendous difference between the outcome of my life and the outcome of my father's life. When he compared the two, there was no difference. And the the principle at work here is that the path that he took led to a completely different outcome, had a different result than the path that his father had taken, right? And the question is, why is his father's way of life, why did that produce abundance and his way of life, it produced depravity? Uh, the prodigal son saw the full picture of what Paul sums up nicely in Romans 6.23, where he says, The wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life in Jesus Christ our Lord, right? There is a way of living that leads to curse, and there is a way of living that leads to blessing. And, and we know this is true. This, is, this isn't even spiritual. This is just practical at that point, right? You know, it's... Uh, you know, think about alcoholism, right? No one, no one thinks that alcoholism is a blessed way to live. It's, I've never once heard the testimony, life was in the pits, things were getting worse, I started drinking, my whole life turned around, everything got better. I, that's, that's a testimony that's been told by nobody ever, right? The same thing with abuse. It's like, well, I was having trouble, you know, communicating in my, in my marriage, and then I started abusing my family, and it just fixed the problem. Like, those, those, those testimonies don't exist, right? Things were really rough in my life till I began to lie. Then everything smoothed out. We understand that there is, as we've been talking about virtue or righteousness, there is a connection between living well and receiving blessing and living poorly and not receiving blessing. Again, not a spiritual blessing, not a spiritual truth, but um, something that definitely has far deeper and more profound uh, spiritual truths underneath it, right? And so what I want to do this morning is I simply want to take that very easily observable reality that different ways of life produce different results, and I want to probe it, and I want to go deeper as we talk about this thing called eternal life. My goal today is to give you perhaps a deeper appreciation and understanding of eternal life that is promised to us, our ultimate reward, right? of what is promised to us in the scriptures by Jesus Christ himself came professing this. Uh, but I think a lot of times we as believers have a very narrow and small view of eternal life that really deprives us of its glory and its goodness in the, in the promise that Christ has given us, right? So what is eternal life? Well, Brian, let me help you. If you don't understand, that means when I die, I get to live forever. So yes, I may die in this life, but I won't die in the next life, right? And so the usual connotation when it comes to eternal life is that, you know, it's about a duration of life. It's about time. Like, yes, this life will end, but the next one won't. We will live eternally, forever and ever, into the future. Amen. Okay? 
But in fact, if you do some research in the Bible and you begin reading these places in which eternal life is mentioned, you actually begin to find that it's a little bit more complex than just a duration of time. There is more to it. We just read the verse of Romans 6.23, right? The wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life in Christ Jesus. So Paul says that eternal life is a gift. Of course, you know the passage John 3, 16, right? God did not, for, for God so loved the world that he gave his one only begotten son that whosoever should believe in him shall not perish, but have eternal life. It's a gift. Paul says it's a gift. It's a free gift. It's also something that we get to possess. Those two go together pretty well, right? But what about John chapter 12? When Jesus is speaking in John chapter 12, <clears throat> he, sa he, he says, I did not come speaking on my own initiative, but the Father himself sent me, and he has given me a commandment as to what to say and what to speak. He goes on, he says, I know that God, my Father's commandment is eternal life. His commandment is, an eternal, is eternal life. That's his rule. That's his order, eternal life. So it's a gift that we have that's a commandment, right? And then perhaps my favorite, I have to open my Bible, this one I didn't write it out in my notes, but John chapter, 1 John chapter 1 says what we have, what was from the beginning, speaking of Jesus Christ now, he was already there from the beginning, what we have heard and what we have seen with our eyes, what we have looked at, what we have touched with our hands concerning the word of life, and the life was manifested and we have seen and testified and proclaimed to you, listen to this, the eternal life which was with the Father. Now, I have a big beef to pull with the translators who don't put capitals on the eternal because what he is actually giving a name to is Jesus Christ. He is calling Jesus eternal life. So eternal life is a gift. It's something that we have. It's a commandment. And now it's the person of Jesus Christ. It's getting a little bit more confusing, isn't it? Right? And so... I hope that your brain pops because when your brain pops, then it allows uh, holes for new information to come in. So this is fun, right? Um, and so one of the things that we have to understand about eternal life, right, is that it's it's not simply a duration of life, right? We, and we have to start here with this word eternal because if we say that eternal is from this point forward, then we have an inconsistency because we call God eternal. And so when we say, well, God is eternal, what are we saying about God? Well, we're saying that God is without beginning or end. God has existed, God outside of time. It's something that exists independent of time. And so when we have this, no, so when Jesus then ascribes the same word to life, Right? He's not talking about something that simply doesn't end. He's talking about something that has gone on and has been going on. There is a life that has been being manifested and lived since completely outside of time, before time and after time exists. Well, how is that possible, Brian? You're breaking my brain. What does this mean, right? Let me see if I can, I can simplify it and sew up some of the holes in our brain, okay? I think one of the reasons we have difficulty understanding eternal life is because we think of it as a duration of life, hear me now, rather than a way of life, okay? A duration rather than a way of life. So in, in our world, there are multiple, quote, ways of living, right? If you live in Alaska, you have a way of life that you participate in. If you live in New York, there is a way of living in New York that is different from living in Nigeria, which is different from living in Greenland, okay? And if I want to say I want to live in Alaska, I don't just take my way of living that I learned in New York and put it into Alaska. Neither do I take my way of living in Alaska and, and put it into Nigeria. It will simply fail. There is a way of living in those different locations, okay, that has been going on for a long time. And when I arrive there, I'm actually invited to participate in that way of life and become like them and share their life with them, okay? I hope you're beginning to follow me here. Okay? There is an eternal 
way of life. There is a eternal way of life, heavenly way of life. What is the way of life in heaven? What's the culture like in heaven? Just as we operate different in different locations in the world, what does it mean to be a citizen, to participate as a citizen of the kingdom of heaven? What is it that Jesus came to reveal to us? In John chapter 17, when Jesus is, is pretty much wrapping up his earthly ministry, he, he's, praying to, uh, he's praying to his Father, and he, this is his prayer for the, the, those that are coming after him. And Jesus reveals to us that this is his goal. This is his aim. He says, verse 22, chapter 17, he says, The glory which you have given me, I have given them. Think about the relationship that existed and has existed outside of time for all of eternity past between the Father and the Son. Okay? He says, The glory which you have given me, I have given them, that they may be one just as we are one. I and them, you and me, that they may be perfected in unity, that the world may know that you have sent me and loved them, even as you have loved me. So, Father, I desire that they may also, whom you have given me, that they may be where I am, so that they may see my glory, which you have given me, for you have loved me before the foundation of the world. Now, this is kind of hard to unpack as you're just listening. I encourage you to just read this and thumb through it because what Jesus is saying is that there is a relationship and a glory that we share together as Father and Son in heaven. And I have come that they may see it and that they may be involved and invited into this same way of life, this same way of love that we share. I have come to reveal the heart of the Father. I've come to reveal the Son. At the beginning of the prayer, if you want to jump back, this isn't in my notes, but verse 17, or chapter 17, he says, Father, the hour has come. Glorify your Son, that your Son may glorify you, even as you have given him authority over all flesh, that to all whom you have given him, he may give eternal life. Okay, he's sharing. God sent his Son into the world to share the life that he and the Father have had for all of eternity, okay? He says, this is eternal life, that they may know you, the only true God, and Jesus Christ, whom you have sent. So he says, so I've come and I've glorified you on earth, accomplishing the work which you have given me to do, to reveal the heavenly way of life, okay? And now, Father, I ask that you glorify me with yourself, with the glory we had before the world was, okay? And so I I want you to think about making full circle here, right? And I want you to go back to Genesis 1, 2, 3, what we've been talking about. The love of the Father. What does the Father do? The Father shares His goodness with His children. What did Jesus Christ came, come to do? He came to reveal to us this eternal life which has been existing outside of time from all of eternity past to all of eternity present that God wants to share this perfect love that he and, the Father, he and the Son have, this perfect unity, that I may be in you, you and us, perfected in unity, to share it with us, because God shares his goodness with us. That's what love does. It shares his best. But this, just like the way of life in Alaska, or just like the way of life in New York, or just like the way of life in Nigeria, it is something that's outside of us that we're invited to step into and to participate. This is the gift of eternal life. That, that just as I, if I hired a guide in Alaska, right, he's giving me the gift. He's giving me the opportunity to step into that reality and to that way of life. And so our, our eternal life, I don't want you to just think of it as I live forever. We are being invited, right? Just as the son, the prodigal son, right, he looks back. And he sees his father's way of living. He says, I want to return to that. That's the way I want to live because my father produced abundance in the famine. Well, I have produced nothing but destruction. And so when Jesus says, I am the way, I am the truth, and I am the life, it is the manifestation, the reality of the eternal life. It's a window, a picture for us of what we step into and what we are promised, that we are beginning to experience we live into now. We have eternal life now. We participate in it now. We're also receiving it because we're getting more and more of it as we grow in maturity. And we also will receive it in the full in the life to come. Let me pray for you. 
Lord, I know this is a, a deep subject and a, a hard conversation to follow, but I do ask that you would give us clarity in this, that we would be able to see the gift of eternal life as an invitation uh, into your holiness, into your righteousness, into your perfect love and your perfect unity. Uh, you didn't just come to keep our hearts beating and to keep our brain functioning. Lord, uh, you didn't come to make, as my the late Robbie Zacharias said so perfectly, you did not come to make bad people good. You came to make dead people live and live in you. And so, Lord, uh, we just ask that you would give us a new understanding and a new depth and appreciation, and that even today we would be participating in this gift you have given us and are giving us and will give us, this gift of eternal life in Christ Jesus our Lord. In your son's name we pray this. Amen. All right, everybody. We'll see you soon. Take care. Love you.